So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start to write, just taking the information in the question, and then just see where we go. Okay. So we've got these currencies, a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred, it goes up to a thousand, right? Yeah. Yep. So we have this country, it has these currencies, and the question is, if I have 500,000, that's half a million, of these uh, notes, I guess, is it possible to get a million dollars of currency out of that? So, a million. Question mark. Can it be done? Okay. Now again, this is, a, um, this is such a great problem because we're not used to can something happen or not? That's the sort of um, through line, the thread between this question and the previous one. We're used to find a number, like solve what, how many do I need, okay? So this is unfamiliar immediately because the question is just weird. Can it be done? I'm gonna introduce some algebra in here. Algebra is our tool for dealing with numbers when I don't know what the numbers are. So I just give them a label and then I just run with it. Okay, so there's going to be some number of dollar notes, some number of ten dollar notes, some number of these, some number of these. Okay, so we're just going to give them a name. Let's call them, say, P, Q, R, and S. Okay, so I don't know what any of these are equal to, but I know there's going to be some number of them. Okay, now once you take all of those notes together, P, Q, R, and S, what's the total number of notes that I have? It's on the board. 500,000, right? So if I had like say um, 125,000 of these, 125,000 of these, 125, etc., they would have to sum, they would have to add up to 500,000, half a million. So I can now create an equation that relates all of these numbers together. Um, I said 125,000 because I divided that by four, because I know that they're connected, they're not just random unrelated numbers. So if I add these all together, then I should get 500,000. So this is a start. This is good. This is progress. Okay? I want you to look at the question now. I've taken into account this piece of information. Have a look at what else we know, because this is pretty much it. right? What other information have I got in the question that I have not taken into account that I could form into an equation? Any suggestions? The value over here is meant to be million dollars. So I haven't touched this at all. So the question then becomes, how do I take that idea, that concept, and turn it into something I can work with, an equation? OK, just pause there. I wonder how, did anyone write something like this, apart from Tina? Yeah? OK, a very small number, right? hands down. So what's going on? What is this, what's Tina starting to get at? Because we're going to finish this equation together, right? What's 10Q? What is the significance of 10Q? It's, think about this, right? <clears throat> Q is the number of $10 notes you've got. It's the number of $10 notes you've got. So therefore, 10Q is the total value of all of your $10 notes. Does that make sense? You've got Q of them. If you had five of them, then the total value would be 50, right? And you can say the same thing about your $100 notes. What's the value? 100R. And the same of your $1,000 notes, 1,000S. Okay? Now this is equal to, as suggested, the value, the actual money value. Okay? So this is good. This is more progress. I've got two equations now. That's really good. Now just as a general rule of thumb, I didn't bring this with me, but I might be able to, um, yeah, I, could, I can do this. I'm going to steal some paper. <clears throat> just as a general rule of thumb. When you're trying to solve for values, right? if you have x number of variables, you need x number of equations to solve that. Let me give you an example. If I gave you, uh, sorry, well, I'll give you an easier example. If I gave you a single variable and a single equation, you could solve that, right? It's very easy to find out what x is. But if I give you two variables or two unknowns, you can't just solve that, right? Because there's in fact an infinite number of x and y's that will satisfy this equation, right? What you need is you need a second equation, something like say this, and then you can get a solution, okay? My question to you is why? Why is it that to get two variables you need two equations? I've chosen x and y deliberately. You can represent these visually, can't you? 
How would I choose to represent something like, say, this is an easy one? How could you represent this visually on something like this? What, what would this look like on here? It would be a straight line, wouldn't it? Um, in this case, I've made the numbers nice and easy for you. It would be y equals 2x minus 4, wouldn't it? And we know what 2x minus 4 looks like. Let me just draw a rough one like that. There's y equals 2x minus 4. That's that line. This one's a little more messy. What's this going to look like? Uh, 5y equals negative x plus 3. Can you describe to me what this looks like? What's it look like? Yeah, it's, it's slanted down. You've got a negative gradient. Is it steep? Is it shallow? It's pretty shallow. So I don't know. Something, something like this. Uh, there you go. Now, this picture tells you why there has to be two equations to get two, sorry, to get two variables. Can you see why? If you want to get a single unique solution, where is it on the diagram? It's the point of intersection, isn't it? Okay. Now that's why if I extend this, if I think about having, say, three variables, x plus y plus z equals something. 2x minus y plus 5z equals something else. Okay. If it stands to reason that a two-variable system gives you straight lines on a two-dimensional plane, right? what do you think a three-variable equation gives you? It doesn't give you a straight line. Two variables, two dimensions. Yeah? An x and a y, an up-down and a left-right. Three variables? So a three-dimensional equation doesn't represent a line. It represents a plane. Okay? So here's my plane. right? And I can orient it whichever way I want, just like I can orient my straight line whichever way I want. This is one of these. Okay? If I have two of these together, right? just like these two exist together, I will find some points of intersection, something like this. There we go. OK. I'll try and hold this as neatly as I can. There we go. OK, so can you see my two planes intersecting together? Can you see that? Can you match it up? Yep. Yeah. Now, if I'm looking for a solution, an x and a y and a z, this is not enough information. Can you see why? Why is it not enough? Sorry, I should have chosen something a little more rigid. Why isn't this enough information? Because like the intersection, the whole line. Yeah, if I hold it exactly this way, what you're doing now, hold that straight as much as I can. I, I don't have enough fingers, obviously. Um, is you're looking right down the, can you see that? You're looking right down the barrel of all the points of intersection. Does that make sense? And they form a straight line, as I suggested. Okay? So that's why if you want to find a unique solution, and I definitely don't have enough hands for this, you need a third plane. right? You need something like, I'm actually not going to put one here because a third plane might not intersect. It could be somewhere else. Okay?